Uh, about a year ago or so, uh, we we team up with uh, Mindesk to uh, answer this this very question, right? So how can we make this uh, connection between these softwares as smooth as possible, uh, knowing that Mindesk uh, already had some of this potential built in. So they were using uh, an Unreal Engine uh, to kind of turn the Rhyme environment in, in, into a virtual reality one. And and we, we thought, well, maybe, you know, if, if this is already kind of, if these two softwares are already talking to each other, there, there must be a way now to just progress that into a link where we can, we can both with, with both environments at the same time. Okay, if you go to the next one, um, here you can see uh, some of the results of this, and, and there is this is this is now live, and it's a tool that is part of the uh, what what Mindesk uh, offers as part of the software. Uh, so if you modify the geometry uh, in Rhino uh, in, in one side, then uh, Unreal uh, will automatically kind of show you uh, what what changes are happening. This means there is there there is a direct pipeline between between the the two the two worlds, uh, and so any geometry that you move is going to move across. Any geometry that you want to import is going to get imported across live. Uh, if you modify it, uh, it's going to it's going to get modified. If you hide hide it, you can you can um, it's going to hide on the other side as well, uh, and so it's going to make this process of kind of turning this this kind of lollipop. Uh, trees into kind of real or more realistic and real trees assets uh, much easier. Uh, so here you can see how things are moving live. And, and another thing that is very interesting uh, is that uh, most of the people that engage with Rhino in the studio not necessarily understand how Unreal works. You know, so here uh, there is a view, a view link where where you can actually control the viewport in Unreal directly from Rhino. So uh, so if you don't understand how to navigate to the Unreal world, you can still uh, modify your views uh, directly from the Rhino viewport, and then Unreal is going to kind of mimic that. Um, and very very recently, um, the tool the tool kind of has been evolving, and and you can you can now automatically modify the assets that are going to be assigned to this tree. So. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have a video that's showing this because it's, it's come up quite recently and we, we couldn't record it. But imagine these lollipop buildings in Rhino will automatically get uh, converted into its um, uh, kind of um, more realistic version uh, based, based on, on, on our own kind of landscape template. Um, and of course, this is not only uh, related to what happened in Rhino geometry kind of in the traditional random geometry, but also can be um, uh, driven by um, grasshopper geometry. So this obviously presents a huge potential for us because uh, you can quickly test different um, different options, but also to animate things, you know, in, in grasshopper very quickly and see how things kind of move uh, or change in, in their real world. And the last one, which again got a lot of focus on in the previous presentation, is Mindesk. You know, it has to be the simplest of them all of creating this real-time synced bi-directional workflow between Rhino and Grasshopper and Unreal, with the kind of added bonus of having this sort of great interface that allows you to model and sort of work in a virtual environment and see that automatically changing um, in Rhino and Grasshopper. So in general, you know, we're really excited about the way that the industry is approaching this, this sort of, uh, problem of data aggregation and, and, and sort of bringing the, not just for the Unreal Engine, but for the entire industry. Um, and we're happy to be a part of that. It's a question for, uh, for you, Sylvia. Um, how do you quickly replace the bubble trees from Rhino with Unreal Engine, with the un, Unreal Engine tree asset? Um, would it replace all objects at once, or is it a kind of a more manual uh, process? So we are, so as Paolo mentioned, um, we, uh, we can use Mindest for that, and uh, we can replace it as in having the name of the tree of Unreal and placing it into Mindest, and then it will literally change as, as we speak, like it will go in the moment that you just uh, connect everything in Mindesk. But if you are not using Mindesk, then you just uh, can have uh, little dots and then paint the 
paint in the bucket of the dots and then you will create the trees. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Right, uh, could, is, there, is there a possibility to live link Grasshopper and Unreal Engine without MindDisk? Um, I think Vittorio will be happy to hear no. Um, Pablo, is this possible? I guess not. Uh, there's not going to be as nice a slicker solution as there would be in using MindDisk. Well, David mentioned a, a couple. So the bomb uh, is one way of, of having this, this kind of direct link. Uh, we actually um, used it. So um, so uh, yeah, we 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 had a kind of a, a mini project going on at some point with. Um, we were happy in, in in trying to test it and trying to develop it with them, um, and so that's that's one way of doing it. And uh, and you mentioned speckle as well. Uh, I, we haven't I haven't tested you know the, the the connection with speckle, but it seems like it's doing it as well. So I mean, this again. Oh, and Rhino right Insight. Sorry. Yeah, I'm right on side. I think this is what I was really trying to get at with these different solutions is they require different levels of expertise and knowledge. You know, Speckle and uh, the BHOM, you know, they are great, but there's a lot of sort of understanding that you need to get around those tools in order to use them. Whereas, you know, what we see being done with MindDesk is a very simple, quick, sort of efficient way of doing it, you know, an out of the box type thing. Um, and Rhino Inside, you know, requires knowledge of Visual Studio and um, U Sharp. So, I guess there's lots of different solutions and how to get this real-time bi-directional link between Rhino and Grasshopper and Unreal, but it really depends on your knowledge in the area on which solution is the best one. And um, you know, I think they're all great. It's just it all just depends on the kind of use case that you've got and the the experience time that you have to invest into them. 